Good afternoon, youngins. This is your Ainie, your Auntie J. Um, I got up a little bit late this morning, so I'm having my coffee late. I am going to do a reaction because I was watching Ose, O'Shea Duke Jackson yesterday, and he did a video regarding Tina Knowles, and I want to kind of do a reaction to that. So why don't you join me as we uh, get into it? be very scared of her when they had that last interview but Tina I like her I, I really do she's really a chip off the old block and she comes from a generation which I, I largely am glad to have been the last person or the last age of the big mamas the Medeas um, the granddaddies and stuff like that that you know at that time uh, you did what you what you were told to do, which is why I'm very much like that today. Uh, you didn't talk back. Somebody told you to do something. You did it. My daddy told you to jump. It was how high. Okay. It's not like today where you can't tell people. Facts. You know, shoot. I, I miss some of the days of old. I really do because the patriarch of my family was my grandfather and you know again I say it I've said it once I'll say it again my grandfather when he spoke it was like EF Hutton everybody just kind of listened and just because first of all my grandfather didn't say a whole lot but when he says something you better recognize and it was yes sir it was yes no it was no talking back and my mother and my aunt and uncle, my aunt and uncle were raised by my grandfather primarily because their mother died at a young age. So some people may say my mom have had, had some uh, masculine energy because again, she was raised by my grandfather who was born in 1910. But again, when my papa said jump, how high? We what, it wasn't no, no back and forth. That, that wasn't happening. People nothing. And you know, Tina Knowles is a very um, talented woman, and and her daughter is Beyonce. Beyonce is a, a very talented and beautiful young lady. Um, she's a little older now, but at the time, you know, largely when I was coming up as a, as a teenager, Beyonce was a sensation, even 25 years ago. And do you guys remember when No 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 came out? When No 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 came out, that was a hit, all right? I never liked that song. I just didn't. To me, it, 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 I've never liked it. But that's beside the point. Everybody <laughs> loved that song. Because me and Beyonce were born the same year. So No, No, No was the truth. Right? And at one point, Tina was um, in the record store with her. And she was trying to talk to her. And, you know, like many people, clout goes through their head. I mean, stop the show. We just had a situation of clout going to their head. Somebody here on YouTube, I won't mention their name, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, but anyways, she thought she was grown. She was getting, you know, all these concert gigs and stuff like that. And she was at a record store and in front of, you know, there's a lot of kids there. And her mom was trying to tell her something. And she was ignoring her and was singing loud, ignoring her mom. And then her mom just pop! Smacked the shit out of her. Okay, I am from that generation, okay? I had enough sense. If I said something crazy, I knew what was coming, so I took off running. When I temporarily lost my mind and thought I was gonna say something or ignore my mother or whatever, and I, either I had the presence of mind to run off because I knew I, butt kicked or, <laughs> I said it under my breath, but either way, I knew it was coming down. So I was never that grown. Okay. And the mama said, don't sing when I'm talking to you. Stop the show. Sounds just like the old days. Which is why I'm glad I, I, I was in the last, in the last era of getting ass, getting asshole. I, 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 I thank God for it today. That part. Let me tell you something. There's a way to do everything. But I got my behind whipped also. Uh, it didn't kill me. Again, I understand that that was how 
the previous generations did, did it because again, that is, it was passed down. But again, it was taught uh, to instill discipline and respect. Well, some may say, and, and I guess there's some truth to that, that, you know, slave owners did it to uh, teach discipline and respect to their slaves. Yes, that is true. Um, but also the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. I'm gonna leave that right there. Because I needed it. I was somebody you had to show me. As a kid, I was rambunctious. If, 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 you didn't, if you didn't slap me uh, 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 like my daddy did, I would be messing today. I'm glad he did it. And another thing, <clears throat> the difference between boys and girls, boys will hear mom nag or whatever, and they are going to do what they're going to do anyway. Now, it's a different thing with boys and dads. But with boys and moms, mom will nag and do what, but boys going to do what they want to do anyway. But when it comes to girls and moms, Oh, no, 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 no. The girls gonna think they gonna be just as, you know, um, grown as their mother and try to challenge them and go back and forth with the mouth. I was one of them. And my daughter was one of them. Okay, I'm gonna leave that right there. Let's keep going. Cause I had, to, it, it learned me something. I learned real quick to shut up. Even now, and I'm 40 and, 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 you know, I'm much, you know, you know, stronger probably than my dad today. But if he say shut up today out of fear, I'll shut up. I just. Okay. Listen, <clears throat> I know there are varying uh, opinions on this, but I'm going to tell you something, youngins, you better put some respect on your parents' name and put some respect on that behavior. When you are talking and interacting with your parents, I will never forget. My, my grandfather had to be in his mid to late 80s. My mom, mm, 40s. She's pushing my grandfather around in a wheelchair. And she is getting frustrated because my grandfather is treating her like she was a little girl. But guess what? She put, she did, she handled herself with respect when it came to her father. Even though she, I would see she would get quite frustrated. But there was none of this going back and forth because again, that was instilled in her at a young age. Even if a, you know, my grandfather was just, Shirley ain't gonna get this, Shirley ain't gonna get that. Okay, daddy. And even now, because again, I was raised by a mother who was raised by a man. I was late into my thirties before I allowed myself to slip up and curse in front of my mother. I didn't even have an alcoholic beverage in front of my mother until I think I was 35. And that was during my uh, promotion. I was promoted in the military and we were celebrating, but before then, oh no, 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 no. And even now at 54, me, when my mother is, you know, talking to me and I don't agree, I just, you know, listen and be going off in my head but i ain't saying nothing just remember them 1989 ass <laughs> especially right in the alley over there by dry creek and harris that's a whole other story <laughs> so beyonce kept humming okay and then kim give me like another smacking sound like smack sound <laughs> mm -hmm. and that second smack brought it all the way home because sometimes um, you know, back in the day when we was coming up, and I'm not advocating it for today, right? We know we live in a very liberal time, but back in those days, let me just say that, uh, sometimes one didn't do the trick. Sometimes two made you blue. <laughs> All right? And, 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 and a double tap got your mind right. That and part. what she said was, Beyonce said that grounded her. And that kept her from becoming a diva. All right. And it, it, it had to come to the fact that just because you have one hit record. Okay. You're not better than me. I'm still your mother. I'm still your mother. You're going to listen to me. You're not. Okay. Here we go. 
you know, I, I've shared with you that my mom had me young. She had me at 17 in the 60s. Uh, she tried to go to college and stuff. Um, but, you know, being a mom, because by the time she was 19, she was married with two children. She couldn't do it. And then when her and my dad separated, ultimately divorced, you know, she was a primarily a single mother raising two daughters. So she couldn't go to school. So, of course, I was able to do things that my mom was not able to do because I did not have a child when I was in high school, did not have a child when I was in college, got my degree, you know, all those kinds of things. So I was able to do more and was more educated than my mother, you know, was able to go. Uh, my career was able to um, I was able to realize a lot of my uh, career aspirations, whereas my mother was not. But again, the moment I thought that I could talk crazy to my mother because she, I had a degree and I had all this and she didn't, oh, she let me know real quick. Let me know real quick. Put some respect on it. So even though I was not an entertainer like Beyonce, still, you better recognize. I had to recognize I'm not better than my mother. She's still my mother. And even to this day, I'm still learning things from her. But again, I'm from a generation that even if you didn't agree, you shut your you shut your pie hole and you listened. That's better than me. And no matter how old you get, you gotta follow the rules. See, people have a problem with me saying that. I made certain videos about certain individuals. Y'all didn't like me saying that, right? Because you're never bigger than the people who made you. You are not bigger than the rules. Yup. Okay, I gotta stop it again. Stop it again. My grandfather. Boy, I know people get tired of me talking about my grandfather. I don't give a damn. I don't even know if my I don't even know what education my grandfather had. I don't. I have no idea. Born in 1910, I have no idea. But he was the wisest man, man I ever knew. Ever knew. And because of him and the sacrifices he made. For his children, the sacrifices he made for his family. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Respect, reverence, deference was due to him. And it's still due to him to this day. Not a problem with me saying that. But see, this is wrong with black America. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Speak on it, nephew. <laughs> This is what's wrong with people right now. And you wonder why you have so many of these young girls today who don't even have the talent or the work ethic that a Beyonce has. And from what I've read, Beyonce could work three to four days straight and not even eat. Mm. That most men would, would cry if they had her work ethic because they couldn't even take it. Mm. That's how dedicated that she is and focused that she is, okay? That's Beyonce. Then you have some girls who will get, you know, clout off of some... Um, Instagram likes or only fan subscribers or comments under a post and they think they're better and they haven't achieved nothing and they are not grounded. And do you know what happens to people who are not grounded once they start getting hot? They fall real fast. And then when they learn, it's too late. That's why Beyonce has been humble. And sometimes in life, you need humbling. You're never better or bigger than people. A lot of times you got to really be up to it and understand that a lot of times God gave us the position that we are in or the strength to get to that position. And that instead of be thinking that we better, so we should be thankful for it. I know even here on Black YouTube, I have only 170,000 subscribers in comparison to big channels, but you know what? I'm thankful. I just celebrated, um, I think it was Saturday, <clears throat> the my first milestone in making it to 100 subscribers, and I could not be more excited. Because I'm here, not because I'm trying to make money or anything like that, I'm here because in my 54 years, I've learned a lot. Made uh, quite a few mistakes, but I'm still here. I'm still here. I have a lot of successes also. But it, it's not because I've gone through this life unscathed. 
And if I want, if I can be just a, a help to somebody, then, then mission accomplished for me. So I don't take it lightly that a hundred people thought enough of the content that I've put out so far to subscribe. That means the world to me. And again, I consider myself a humble individual. Some may disagree with that, <laughs> but I consider myself a humble individual. Why? Because of the things that were instilled in me from my mother and my grandfather. Let's continue. I'm thankful to be over here and talk what I talk about every day and try to use my platform to, you know, get my ideas out there and influence people because God didn't have to let me do that. I could be dead. I could be in severe sickness, but I'm not. And I'm humbled because I get a chance to work for what I got. Don't nobody owe me nothing and I'm not entitled. Let's speak on that also. You know, again, I'm still learning things about my grandfather, you know, and he's been gone. It'll be 20 years next year. But in talking with my mom recently, and I encourage you people, if you have elders that are still here and in their right mind, sit down with them, interview them, ask them the questions about how they grew up and the things they had to go through. Because my, my mother was sharing with me that my grandfather worked hard all of their life, worked in a lumber yard, you know, had a, his uh, lawn business, but never got government assistance for anything for him or his kids. Everything they had, he worked for it. Didn't expect anybody to give them, give him anything. There's something to be said about that. And see, there's many people today, largely men and black women, too. I'm just going to be honest. But, but I think that really what we're dealing with is a lot of young women who feel that because they're pretty or they have a nice body or something. Well, you know that, 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 that the world owes them something. They ain't got to listen to nobody. They don't have to do anything for anything. You, you know, you know and, and the reality is that's not true. You have to. Okay? You have to work for what you get. The Bible says, I'm paraphrasing, you don't work, you don't eat. That's pretty simple. You don't work, you don't eat. And again, <laughs> I used to be, <laughs> I'm fair looking now, but I used to be pretty. I'll be considered one of those pretty girls. But even then I worked. I didn't expect for a man to just do everything for me. Come on now. And I surely didn't expect because I was pretty. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't use it to get into the club now. and then. All right. But again, I worked. And I, when I say worked, I don't mean thotting it up. This is why Beyonce got Jay-Z. If you want something out of life, you got to be humble and grounded because... Once you start thinking that you're too big to fail, you're going to fail. And then it's too late to try to save face afterwards. Correct. And see, that's the importance of parenting. I'll come back to that. Where are the parents? See, team. Okay. I talk to my daughter daily, and I'm very proud of her. You know, I talk about how generational cur curses can be broken. My mother had me as a teenage mother at the age of 17. I had my daughter, although I was 27, I was not married, but I had graduated from high school and I graduated from college. Now my daughter, she's married and they've had her, their first child. And she finished high school, finished college. You know, all the time that she was in school, always, 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 made good grades never now the mouth was a one was one thing but that's part of adolescence that we had to deal with but she had a strong work ethic you know my daughter because i wanted to teach her what it was like to earn her own money got her first job like me at 14. so she could understand the responsibility that comes with earning money 
when she was a senior in high school, uh, she had started her own cupcake business at in high school. She was taking orders every day to not only to the students in her high school, but also the teachers in her high school. Also, while she was a senior, she was working two jobs at McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and going to junior college. But again, she knew I didn't play. She knew from her early, early, I didn't play. And also because I knew my daughter and what she would try to pull with me when she would come home telling me the teacher don't like me and blah, blah. I didn't just take that. I, I know my kid. So I would talk to the teachers and find out what was going on. And sure enough, she was being who I knew she was. And she knew I wasn't just going to take her word for it. I was going to find out the real deal. And if I found out that she had any culpability in it, I was going to hold her accountable because I knew my kid. And I wasn't standing for no bull crap. You know, wasn't going to let her daughter go out there and become an OnlyFans model. Get too high and get on drugs. Mess up her life. No. Remember that saying in the black community? I brought you into this world. I'll take you out. Meaning Look, that you're going you to mind me. Uh, for those of you who don't understand that concept, Google Marvin Gaye. Okay? Google him. His father brought him into this world. His, brought, his father took him out. I'm not saying it's right, but I say I understand. Some of y'all don't know what that meant back then. You don't mind me. That's an old saying from the South. Like, you're going to listen. You're going to do what I tell you to do. And if we have more, but see, the, the world today, you can't do that because that's abusive. You know, see, back in the 90s, you could still do that. But now today, you know, if you want to even yell at your kid, they give you 50 years now. That's why the kids today struggling so much because the parents can't really deal with them in that way. You know what? I don't give a damn. <laughs> because my daughter knew from an early age, from an early age, if I got to come up to her school for any reason other than the honor roll, oh, it was going to be a problem. She knew that. And where she would act up is where she would get beat up. She knew that too. And it's sad because so many teachers and administrators like, Miss Jones, you know, you're not like a lot, a lot of the parents. I wasn't playing. My job was to go to work at the time being a, in a military officer to, to handle my business. And her job was to go to school. And that was her job. And to do what she needed to do around the house. You understand me? You know? I'm not advocating any violence, but I can tell you one thing. That a lot of the other groups, uh, the, you know, I was saying in the Caribbean or, or global diaspora community, hey, they don't, if their kids got out of line, they deal with them. Make sure that they understand. You're going to listen to what I got to say. So Let me tell you something else. <clears throat> I don't know anything about Beyonce, but based on this this uh, dialogue and this this interview that she did, Beyonce still knows, even though she's grown, she represents her mother and those who came before her. Same with me. Same with me and my daughter. I taught her about style, grace, class. When you go out, you represent me. Even though I am 54, I'm still representing my mother and my grandfather and the people who paved the way for me to be here. I will not put anything out there that's gonna bring shame to my, my mom, my daughter, now that I'm married, my husband. My daughter's the same way. She's not gonna be out there thotting it up and thank God she never was like that because she didn't see her mother doing that. He's speaking, you know, he's speaking facts. He's speaking facts and my daughter is a mother now to a girl and I wait for the day that she starts telling me about the same things that I used to tell my mother about concerning her so I can sit back and laugh. 
But one thing she's going to see, my, my little Nick Jr. is going to see, because she's named after me, I'm Nichelle. My middle name is Nichelle. And so I call her Nick Jr. because her name is Nichelle. Um, she's going to see how her, her, the women in her family conduct themselves and the expectation. And she's going to follow suit. So, you know, we have a responsibility, you know, women to make sure that we are instilling in our daughters the right values. Again, a strong work ethic and, you know, pretty can only get you so far. What you got in your head? What's up in here? And the fact that you're not entitled to anything, you're only entitled to what you work for. And I want my daughter, well, I don't have to worry about her because she's good, but my granddaughter to make sure that, that she uses her brain more than her body. So thank y'all for tuning in and until next time.